Good evening. Well, Pastor Susan and myself are going to um, do tonight. We're excited. So she's going to share a little what we just saw in our hearts for tonight, um, which is also, let me pull this up. Just the Lord, if you've been around for any length of time, you know prayer is just super vital here and um, really a core foundation for this house and um, we see it as very vital. And also, um, if you've attended Night of Prayer recently or um, just in services and stuff, I know God's just really been highlighting lately the importance of prayer, especially in the time and season that we're living in. Now more than ever, he's needing our voice. And how many of you know, in order to pray, it takes your voice. You can't pray without using your voice. And um, I don't remember where I shared it. Maybe it was at night of prayer. But oftentimes we can get caught in just um, thoughts. And sometimes it can be very easy to think we've done something because we're just thinking it. But you see, all in the word, prayer takes words. God is all about, he gave us a voice for a reason. To do what? To magnify him, to bring about his plan into the earth, and it takes us using our voice. You see, God in the very beginning, what did he do? Let there be light. Even God had to use his voice to create. And so to understand we're made in his image and his likeness, therefore when we use our voice, we're creating. We're bringing about his plan into the earth. And so um, so tonight what we saw is just teaching a little bit on prayer, because how many of you know faith comes by hearing? And um, just getting stirred up, um, stirred up in our prayer. And then actually just taking time tonight as a group to pray and um, to just let our voice um, be heard tonight and to, to make a difference for the kingdom. Amen. Because our prayers work. And I just felt today to say that earlier as just, I was just praying just for you to be encouraged to know your prayers work. And when you speak and when you declare and when you say something, God hears it. Heaven hears it. And it doesn't, um, we were even talking to some of the boys that have been um, just around us as of late. And, you know, a lot of times if you say, hey, pray over the meal or, hey, I want you to pray, you know, our first initial response is to do what? Usually, oh, no, no. Well, what a lot of times is it? It's. It's saying, I don't have much to give. I'm not good at it. I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to pray like so-and-so. I mean, I've even heard it voiced before. I, I'm not good. You, you do it. That is such a lie from the enemy because if you're born again, the very Holy Spirit lives and dwells in you. Therefore, you have the helper with you. You have him with you. Therefore, you can pray God's perfect plan. And um, you hear his voice and you know. So just to encourage you tonight before we minister and, and before we go into prayer, just to be open and, and not to let those thoughts of the enemy come to say, I don't know how to pray. I don't know enough about prayer. I don't know. Can we always grow and can we always increase? Absolutely. But don't let that stop you and say, I have to reach a certain level <laughs> before I can be used of God to pray out or to pray out his plan. And um, anyway, so yeah. Did you push it? Just push that. All right. Yeah, that's really, really good. And, um, you know, there's an old saying that says silence is golden, but actually it's not. Yeah. And um, there's nothing golden about it. God, like Pastor Evan said, God has his spirit living on the inside of you, and he's given you a voice. And the cool thing that I love about what you're learning in this church is you're learning how to be led by the Holy Spirit in every area of your life, and that includes in your prayer life. And the Holy Spirit will lead you to pray for people and to pray um, into his plans and purposes, and it's just so powerful. And you know what that says? When he's leading you, that means that he's also supplying the grace and he's giving you the words and the ability to be effective. And so I just want to encourage you, if you ever get thoughts, like Pastor Evan said about, you know, I'm not very good at prayer, I can't do any, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. I just want to remind you that probably at that moment, your focus is on the wrong thing. It's on you, and it needs to be on him, because he's actually um, the prayer that's come to live on the inside of you. 
Okay, a few things that Pastor Nevin and I were talking about today, and we'll just bring out tonight, and then we'll just, you know, pray. Um, I know we have things in our heart to pray tonight. We'll see how the Holy Spirit brings it out. Um, but something that I have written down in my notes today, and I think it's so important in the times in which we're living, we're, we're living in a time, I think, as Americans, everybody in here an American, I mean, we're here, right? And um, I, never in my lifetime have I um, been concerned about the freedom to worship or pray or read the Bible. I mean, we've just been super blessed, haven't we? To live in a place where that's been encouraged, it hasn't been discouraged. But, you know, times are changing, not only here, but around the world. And the Bible says that we're living in the last days. they are perilous times. But before I go any further, one of the things that I do know is that in this time, we need as Christians more than ever to be full of his word, to be full of his spirit, to be full of faith, so that we can be bold to do what God has called us to do. And, um, and it takes boldness. It takes boldness to be a Christian in a really dark world. It takes boldness. And boldness comes from our faith and confidence. And faith, the mother of faith, is communion. It's time with the Lord. You will never have faith in a God that you spend no time with and that you don't know. You won't. You can't live out of someone else's faith. You can only live out of wherever yours is. So, you know, I have a level of confidence in my husband's love for me because I'm with him, not just because I've heard somebody say, oh, you know what, Kevin loves you. I know for myself he loves me. And if anybody were to say something different, there's something in me that would rise up and go, no way. I can say with confidence, no way, because I know him. And I just want to encourage y'all, you have to know God that way. So in this day and hour and time when the very core values that we believe as Christians are being challenged and even threatened, we have to know him. And we have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he's with us and that he's for us so that we can be full of faith, full of the Holy Spirit, full of the word, and we can be bold in this hour. Okay. Feel free to jump in anytime. Okay. Okay. So 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 5, and they're going to pull it up in the New King James, I guess. Um, 2 Timothy 3, 1, yeah, through 5. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Perilous, by the way, perilous, that word perilous, it means this. It means dangerous or risky. It involves this sense of chance of loss or injury or harm or insecurity or uncertainty. That's from Webster. Doesn't mean that has to be our experience, but it means the times are going to be that way. The climate's going to change. Let's go on. For men, and here's the why. Why? Because we, we are looking and we're seeing this. Men, women, people in general will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power and from such people turn away. Now, what's really interesting is this not only describes the world in which we live in, people who don't know Jesus, but we see from verse 5 that it can also be referring to people in the church who don't really know their God. And when we don't know the word and when we don't know God, it can be easy for us to believe things that don't align with Scripture. Mm -hmm. And when we do that 
it robs us of our faith. You cannot have faith where the will of God is not known. If you've got a question about the will of God in a matter, or if you don't know who is your um, enemy and, and who is on your side, it's going to be hard for you to know what to resist and how to handle adversity when it comes. So knowing the word is super vital to um, praying effectively and also to being bold. Mm -hmm. And we need boldness in this time. So what we see now is that the works of darkness and what we're seeing in the end times from what we read is there's going to be an, an acceleration and increase of some of these things. But you know what the Bible says? Where sin abounds, grace abounds even more. And the grace of God is not just forgiveness that comes to us, us through Christ. Praise God for that. But actually, grace is multi-sided or multifaceted. the Bible says. And there, um, what we see is that grace is empowerment. Grace, our saving grace, is the power given to us by God to become a child of God. It's supernatural ability and power we could never do on our own. So where sin abounds, a grace abounds much more. That is the power of God to live in a way where we still shine in a really dark world. And it takes faith to do that. It absolutely takes faith to do that. Okay? 2 Timothy chapter 3 and then verses 12 through 14. And I'll read from that Passion Translation. For all who choose, everybody say choose. choose. So that's something we have to do. So for all who choose to live a godly life as worshipers of Jesus, the anointed one, will also experience persecution. That doesn't sound like a good news verse. <laughs> but here's the deal. All of those who choose, another translation says, all who are determined to live a godly life. We have to make a choice every day to live the word, to do the word, to be the church, to be the difference, to be a light, to be the message. We have to choose that every day. And everybody's circumstances are a little different. Sometimes in circumstances, it's not very challenging. But in other circumstances, it can be massively challenging. And that's when we have to know our God and we have to know his word to be able by faith to tap into the grace in that moment, to be bold in that moment, to be bold in a wise way. So all Christians who are determined to, to live a godly life are going to experience pushback in some way, even to the point where it could actually be persecution. We see that in nations around the world right now. So we're going to need more and more bold boldness in these times. And that comes from knowing him. All right. 2 Timothy 4 and then verses 1 through 3. Anything you want to add, hon? Yeah. Well, you can go to your verse. All right. 2 that. Timothy 4, 1 through 3. And this is Amplified Classic. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by the light of the coming and his kingdom, herald and preach the word. Keep your sense of urgency. The world, and I'm going to come back to this, so maybe you can leave it up there, but the world in which we live is always wanting to pour cold water on our fire. The spirit in the world wants us to lose our sense of urgency. But you know what? The things that we see going on in the world point to one thing. Jesus is coming soon. Mm -hmm. And it's our job to be ready. And it's our job to spread the gospel to people. This is why we're here. So look at this. Keep your sense of urgency. All right? Whether the opportunity seems to be favorable or unfavorable, convenient or inconvenient, welcome or unwelcome, you as a preacher of the word are to show people in what way their lives are wrong, convince them, rebuke, correct, warn, urge, encourage. 
being unflagging and inexhaustible in patience and in teaching. One more scripture there. For the time is coming when people will not tolerate, endure sound and wholesome instruction, but having ears itching for something pleasing and gratifying, they will gather to themselves one teacher after another to a considerable number chosen to satisfy their own liking and to foster the errors that they hold. You know what that is? Cold water on the fire. The enemy's always working to pull you and I um, into living out of our senses and our feelings. I don't feel like going to church. I don't feel like serving. I don't feel like I'm walking in victory right now. I don't feel like God is very near. near. Let me tell you, if we live by feelings, there's going to be cold water thrown all over our fire. Because feelings are so fickle, feelings need to be told what to do. Feelings are actually supposed to fuel us in our decisions for God, not to rule and reign us. We're to use them to our benefit, but they're not to rule and reign us over us, right? So I just want to encourage you. Um, we're living in a time when things will be tolerated that actually shouldn't be tolerated. Let's not, let's be wise in this time and not let the enemy pour cold water on our fire, but let's keep our sense of urgency. And right along with that um, today, because we were talking earlier just about um, boldness, she, she was wanting to share on that. And then as I was just looking um, today, I was outside, but I just thought it just came up in my spirit that light is actually really bold. And, you know, it says um, Matthew 5, 13, it says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And um, there is, like she's talking about, there there is such a, um, I don't know if you want to use the word narrative, but... There's such a pressure and a narrative to try to be, um, the word is bold. Light's bold. And you don't see a city on a hill. What does it say? A city on a hill only shines when it's okay to shine. Or, you know, you light your lamp. Like, I love what it says here. They put it on its stand, not under a bowl. What's light meant to do? Shine. What happens when light shines? Darkness has to go. So we are called to shine. And I love what Pastor Nate says all the time. That light isn't meant to be shined like a flash. Have you ever had someone, Travis does this, his friend, all the time when we go to Oklahoma. But he'll take a flashlight and he'll just hit it quick and shine it in your eyes. And it's like, oh. And then after a little bit, you know, you're seeing stars. And that's not what our light's meant to do to others. But that doesn't mean we don't shine our light. There's a difference between shining it in someone's eyes and blasting them, and there's a difference between letting it be on and being light. And, and we're not called to be, we're not called to put it under a bowl. <laughs> I love that. And then what it says here is, it says, and it gives light to everyone in the house. You know what that means? My light's supposed to affect my marriage, my family, a church house. But then this is what it says. Everyone in the house, in the same way, let your light shine before others. What does that mean, outside of the house? A city on a hill is meant to be what? When it's dark, it's seen. What, what's a lighthouse good for? When sailors and people are out in the ocean, what happens? That lighthouse is on, and it's a beacon of light that does what? It draws. Light actually draws. It draws, but it also dispels and exposes darkness. And then Matthew, um, sorry, not Matthew, Ephesians 5, 8, it says, You were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light and find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. And, you know, we can look and go, 
oh yeah, I'm called to expose. I'm called to, it's not talking about that. It's also with love, okay? We can't forget faith and love work together. God sent Jesus and he loved. He, he was light. He was light and he did disrupt things and there were certain things, but never once was he out of a place of love. So there is a place of love, but we are still called to be a light. And there is many times because of narrative and because of pressures and because of things that go on, it wants to shut your light off or it wants to dim it. And I just see this house being a house so full of light, a people so full of light. Well, where does that come from? Psalms 119, 105 said, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So what does this mean? The more word that I have, the more communion time that I have with him, he is light. So what happens? The more I spend time with him, the more light I receive and the more light I illuminate out. So more word, more time spent with him means walking and operating more and more from a place of light. And we were just talking earlier, we have to know if, if I'm not in this, it, with all that is going on, all of the media, all of everything going on in the world, it's loud and it's bold. And if I am not in the word, which is what? Light and it's truth. And we have to settle the word of God is final authority in my life. Which means when I face something, when I'm looking at something, when I'm making decisions, what does the word say? I got to go back to the word. Why? Because it is light. It is the truth. It is the solid foundation. So if I am not in the light and I am in a dark world and I'm not in the light, then there can be things said, there can be decisions made, there can be things, and I'll just go right along with it. Not on purpose trying to partner with darkness or Satan's kingdom, but because light is absent, I haven't done my job to stick close to the light, then I... I can take those thoughts because what happens if I don't know the truth, there's nothing there to stop those, those thoughts of darkness, those wrong ways of thinking, thinking those wrong ways of behaving. This is why the word is so powerful because the Holy Spirit can then bring it up to us and remind us when a thought or when we hear something and we just go, you know what, that, that's not right. You'll just, that's not right. Okay, well, what does the word say on that? Or, oh man, this morning I just read something about that. That's not right. Well, what's it doing? It's renewing my mind to the word. What's it doing? It's lighting my path. I got to have light to walk. Okay, last thing and then I'm almost done. But light is bold. It's not afraid of darkness. It doesn't apologize for itself. I've never seen a lighthouse or any other thing, apologize that it's a lighthouse. Don't apologize for being a Christian. Don't apologize for believing what the word says. Don't apologize for taking what his word says and saying, he's a healer. He's a provider. He's a more than enough God, not just a barely get by God. He's a God who restores relationships. Let's start saying what the word says and not be apologetic. Not be apologetic for the word. Be bold with it. And shine. Shine. And this is something the Lord asked me. Am I doing what I was created to do? Am I doing what I was created to do? In my life, am I shining? And that's a good question to ask ourselves. Lord, show me. Show me areas where I've let those things come in that have put out the light in that area of my life. And then this, light and darkness are both released through our words. Prayer takes words when we pray and when we pray by the Spirit and what the Word says. We're operating from and we're releasing light. So here's the amazing thing. I'm not just called to shine, but the way that I shine is through my actions and through my words. One of the greatest ways we can shine as a believer is using our words 
to declare out his word, to declare out his plan, because what's it actually doing? It's actually creating light. I can pray over Mona. I can speak God's word over Mona. I can pray in the Holy Spirit for Mona. And you know what it's doing? It's bringing light to her. And there may be places of darkness or things that, you know, she's not seeing right. And my prayer releases light where then she has light come and she's, she can then, she still has the choice to make. But then she can make that choice from a place of light. Don't we want our family members don't we want our city officials, this city, our governing officials, our nation to be operating from a place of light? Like enough of the blame game of what's going on and talking about what's going on and let's use our voice and our words to create light for our leaders, to create light. Like the church shining and doing what it's called to do with our words. So there was a phrase that came to me as I was studying and reading and I was reflecting on the life of Paul and Barnabas and Peter and John, you know, the, the apostles when you're reading through the, the whole book of Acts. And you see that a characteristic of Paul and Barnabas was their boldness, like it impacted every part of their life and ministry. And I was thinking about it, and I thought, what is boldness, really? And this is just what came up in my heart. Boldness isn't brashness. It's not harshness. But it is truth unrestrained. And let me just describe that a minute. God is wanting to release miracles and heal bodies and change the hearts of people and connect and touch people's lives. He's wanting, that, he's wanting to do that, but he uses us to do it. And as the church, when, um, when we're not spending time with him and communicating with him, we may not mean to, but we're not going to have the boldness and the confidence and the faith to respond to the direction of the Spirit. And in that sense, we're going to be restraining truth. We're going to be restraining God from doing the very things he wants to do. And just real quickly, like Peter and John, remember in Acts chapter 3, they were going into the temple by the gate, beautiful, and there was the lame man. And they went by this guy like every day. But on this day... Now listen, this, this is maybe the part that's not written in, but you just have to know how God works. On this day, the Holy Spirit witnessed to Peter's heart to do something for this man. Number one, I'm glad, and I'm sure that man's glad, that Peter was in a place where he was sensitive to the Holy Spirit, and he was full of the word and full of faith to step out on the word that the Holy Spirit gave him. Let me tell you, on the other side of our faith and boldness are the miracles that God is wanting to do. But it takes us cooperating with him. So I'm just thinking about all that God wants to do and the outpouring that we're believing him for and the miracles and the signs and the wonders. And I just want to be sure that we know God's not just going to come on us one day and make us do stuff. We're going to have to, the gifts of the Spirit to be in operation, you always have to start out with what we would call our general faith. It takes faith to do that. I mean, I've seen people minister before or heard of them, like Smith Wigglesworth was bold. Have you heard of him? Like one time, and I'm not telling you to do it, but one time he picked up like a deformed baby. And I can't tell the story because people, he did a lot of things. But even times when the way he ministered was, and I'm not telling you to do this. I'm saying he was directed in that moment to do certain things. So I look and go, oh my gosh, if this is not Jesus, we're going to be sued. Right? I want to be so full of the word and so full of faith that when God moves me to say what needs to be said or to do what he wants done or to pray what he wants prayed, I just do it. I just do it. And I don't talk myself out of it. Have you ever been there? Man, it irritates me when I'm like that. 
And so anyway, boldness is just so necessary, but we're going to have to be full of the word as Pastor Evan was sharing. And I know you're taught that in this church, but man, make feeding your practice. You know how you would graze in your kitchen? You know when you go to the kitchen, look in the fridge or the cupboard, like, mm, I don't know, I'm just kind of hungry. Let's make feeding on the word like that. Hmm, wonder what God wants to say to me right now. Maybe I better listen to that podcast. Maybe I ought to put on that good audio teaching. Maybe I need to listen to Pastor Nate from Sunday. Maybe I need to hear that again. There was something in there, and I need to hear that again. And during the day, we're taking opportunities just to feed a bit more. And I'll tell you what it's going to do is fuel our faith. And it's going to cause God to be more and more on our mind. We're going to be more aware of the one that we're carrying. And in those times, you know, I just believe it's going to be the most natural thing for the Holy Spirit to say, call so-and-so right now. And we'll be like, okay, before you know it, you're calling them. I don't really know why I'm calling. You know, the thought came to me to call, and now I'm calling. Or giving, or I don't know, doing whatever. But boldness um, is a result of that communion and time with the Lord. So, yep, that's it. That's what I got. All right. Awesome. So I think we'll just take some time, if it's okay, to pray together. And um, just to encourage you back to what we said at the beginning is just to know your words are powerful. And I do want to encourage you, um, you know, for some of you, you've been with us in prayer times. For others of you, you maybe haven't or prayer is kind of new territory for you. Um, I do want to encourage you um, to do something that maybe you've not done before. Maybe um, maybe in a public setting, you know, you've never been in a public setting for prayer, but I do want to encourage you, use your voice. Your voice is so vital and so important, and to know it, it could be one word, it could be a phrase, it could be, you know, you say something and then a few minutes later you say something else, but I just want to encourage you, let your voice be heard, not to the people next to you, it's not for them. Like we talked about, what is this? This is partnership with the Lord and saying, Lord, I'm focused on you and your plan and what you want done here. And it takes me partnering with him to declare out, like she was talking about, with boldness. Don't let fear stop you from using your voice to declare what he's wanting to declare out. And to know when I'm doing it, it's not in my own ability, but I am taking a step of faith to use my voice, to speak out light, to speak out what he's saying. And then I know he's partnering with me to get it done. Isn't that amazing to know? We don't, we don't, it's not on our shoulders to make something happen. That's his job. My job is just to say, Lord, I'm, I'm centered in on you. I'm focused on you. I'm partnering with you tonight to pray out your plan. How many of you know his plan needs to be done in our lives? His plan needs to be done in this church, in our city, in our community, in our schools, in our nation. And it takes us partnering with him to get the job done. And so I want to encourage you just... Um, Usually for night of prayer, we have people kind of come up. So you can come up if you want. Um, you can walk around the back if you want. You can stay in your seat. Do what? What were you saying? Yeah, that's fine. You can come up around here or sit. But I would encourage you just to get where you feel like you, um, it's not just kind of like a, okay, <laughs> session. It's, Lord, I'm partnering with you, so whatever you have to do um, to do that. But yeah, any of you who want to come up around, we'd love that. I think I'll just sit down here on the okay. step. Or do you want to stand? Or Okay. Okay. So, we're going to pray. And, um, May I have a tissue? Because I know I'll probably need one. <laughs> My prayer standbys. Got my stuff. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
And so kind of how um, we usually start out always, um, and I know some of you may be newer, but it says to come into his presence with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. So always just starting out, it's always just a good thing to start out um, to get our focus on him is to magnify him and to thank him for how good and how faithful he's been to us. How many of you he's been good and he's been faithful? I mean, we're sitting here tonight, free to worship, free to be together. We got here tonight, right? He's been so good to us. And just recall the times that he's been good and faithful. And then we'll just begin to pray out. And I just encourage you, like I said, you may have little phrases or you may have, have things. There's multiple people praying, but the awesome thing is there's one Holy Spirit. So even though there's multiple people which means there's multiple gifts, there's multiple supplies. I'm not going to pray the exact same thing Mona is or Kylie or Sheena or all of you are here, but that's good. Why? Because God is about diversity. Do what? Do you want to come say it? I think it's super cool. The verse that Jake used for the offering, it was... Um, Matthew 18, we're to agree on earth touching anything. And this was out of the Amplified Classic. And how many of you know, if you've ever heard like the Disney Orchestra or whatever, it's phenomenal because every piece is so individual. There's a different sound. But it, and then so look at it, what it says. It says, I tell you, if two of you on earth agree, in other words, what are we coming here to agree on? We've come together, gathered in his name. And in a sense, Matthew chapter 6, where it says, we're coming together to bring his kingdom. In other words, Father, you have a plan for right now. You have a, a, a desire both for my life, uh, for this church, for this community, for our nation, for, you know, so on and so forth, um, for my children, for so many things. And here I am gathering and saying, God, I want your plan. And here's, here I am, and I believe you're here saying, I want your plan. And you're saying, I want your plan. And you're saying, I want your plan. And you're saying, I want, and it's like, wow. And if one can put a thousand to flight, who can put 10,000 in? Now, instead of having a 10-piece orchestra, we got, right now, we got a 100-piece orchestra. And somebody's playing this, and somebody's playing this. And, and, you know, you might be the same, have the same giftings in the same bent, but you're playing a different note, and it's just like, wow, wow. And so what it says, if you agree on uh, earth, agree, harmonizing together. Uh, make a symphony together about whatever or anything and everything they may ask. It will, what, come to pass. And that's what Pastor Evan was talking about. She said, your prayers are powerful. They're work. They work. They're working. And, um, and it'll be done for them by who? My Father in heaven. Glory to God. And so I just love that. Even the, like you were saying, the different pieces. And I love this, the teaching in, uh, on prayer. And even what you're saying, use your voice. You know, uh, toot your own horn, you know. Okay, we're doing the orchestra. Um, but seriously, it, it, it's, it's, don't just sit there tonight. Blow in, you know, use, use your peace, use your, and, and, and the, the greatest instrument, we always talk about this, is your heart. That's what David played. Oh, he played the harp. No, he played from his heart. He, that's how he came up with the melodies and the anointings and the, and you'll notice that if any, if you ever see somebody that's a psalmist, they're not playing just, uh, you know, somebody's lyrics they play from their heart and they play for him amen so amen that's so good and just like he said your heart and um we get tied up sometimes in thinking our prayers have to be super eloquent or sound the way someone else does just throw that out the window because god uses your voice through your personality through how you're wired and it's still powerful. Like he said, when it comes from your heart, that's what God looks at. He's not looking at how it sounds, how eloquent it is. He's not comparing you to somebody else. He just wants our heart. Amen. So, Father, we just worship you tonight. We thank you. You're so good and you're so worthy. And we just honor you. As a, as a congregation tonight, we just say, you're good. 
Lord, you're so good. You're so faithful. We exalt you for your goodness. You've met us. You've met us. Thank you, Lord, every time you've come to meet us. Never once have you left us. You're always right beside us. No matter how far we drift off or how far away we go, there you are. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You've never left us. We're never alone. Thank you, Lord. Never alone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We do, we lift our voices to you tonight and we say, for you are good, for you are faithful, you are true, you are kind, you are just, you are, you are our healer, you are our deliverer, you are our strength and our strong tower. We thank you, Lord. We don't put our trust in any other source. There is one source, and it is you. And we say tonight with our mouth out loud, you are my source. You are my source. Thank you, Lord. We look to you, the one and only true God. You, you alone deserve the honor. You alone deserve the praise. You alone. Oh, thank you, Lord. You are the source for our family. You are the source for this nation, for our city, Father. You alone. You alone. No one can take your place. It's you, and it's you alone. And so we, just tonight, we make that decision to put you in the proper place. To put you in the proper place you belong. You are Lord. Yeah, you are Lord. You are Lord over all. We say that tonight. Jesus, you are Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. You're Lord over us. You're Lord over our families. You are Lord over Beyond Church. You are Lord over Alma and this uh, surrounding cities. You are Lord over Arkansas. You are Lord over the United States of America. You are Lord over the nations. Oh, thank you, Lord. And your plan will not be stopped. Your plan will not be stopped. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. You are on the move. You are on the move. And so we get our eyes up above, up above the noise, up above the smoke. And we look to you. We're seated next to you far above. So that's our place. That's our place where we're praying from tonight is far above. We're seated far above. So we thank you, Lord. You are on the move. And when we're up above, we see that. We see all that you're doing. We see all of the good. We see your plans being brought about. It's a place of light. Oh, thank you, Lord, from a place of light. Oh, thank you, Lord, this church and this body operates from a place of light. So we say light be. We say light be in the name of Jesus. Oh, where there's been darkness, we say darkness no more. Oh, we shine the light there. We shine the light there. And we say light be in the name of Jesus to all of the eyes. To to all of the eyes. Oh, Kadashe. Oh, Kadashe Gete. Out of darkness. Out of darkness and into light. Out of darkness and into light. Exposing ditches. Oh, Kadada Basho Goto. Ah, Sagete. Ah, Soko. That's right. That's right. The light. The light. The light. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, Kadada Gadaba. And we say no weapon, no weapon formed against us 
weapons can prosper. No weapon formed against your church will prosper. Oh, we thank you. We're advancing. We're advancing and we're taking ground. We're moving ahead. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. No disease, no pestilence can come near us. We thank you. We're covered by the blood of Jesus. We're covered. We're covered and we're protected as we move forward. As we move forward. Thank you, Lord. We will not be stopped. We will not be hindered. We don't take a back seat. Oh, we thank you. Just a, a movement, a movement in the church, a movement in the church. Awakened and up on your feet. Active, active, active about his plan. Active about his plan. Oh, God, yeah, we have an active church. We have an active church. Thank you, Lord. We're up and about. We're up and about. And we say, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Use me. Here I am, Lord. Use me. Oh, God, yeah, into their positions. Thank you, Lord. Positioning. 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 Ah, God, Oh, God, Mobilizing. It's a man to sombro makishki diada. And then in an asombro moko coming together, many coming together, and it's a on the rise, on the move, oh, yeah. Thank movement, you, Lord. movement, movement. Mm -hmm. Yes, I got some oh, Thank you, Lord. We're moving because yes, you're moving. moving. We're moving, moving because moving. you're moving. Oh, you're God, on the move. So yes, you are. 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 Father, you did it before, do it again. You did it before, do it again. If not here, where? If not when, why not now? If not yes, us, thank you, Father, Lord, come thank you, Lord. and move the way oh, you want to move. Yes, and your will, Father. Your will, Lord. Your will. And so let it be. 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 And so
only you can do it, Lord. Only you can do it. All of our trust is in you. All of our trust is in you. But because, because you go to the heart of people, you're able yes. to reach the heart of people. Yes. And so, Thank yeah, you, we're Jesus. lifting that the up hearts. and we're asking you to the do hearts. it. We're the asking hearts. you to do it, Lord. Tender, we're lifting tender, up our leaders tender. and we're asking you to touch their yes. hearts yes. in a real way, Thank in you, a Lord. tangible yes. way. Yes, tangible. In a tangible. way that only you can oh, do, Father. Da, 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 oh, so the hearts of men and women. The hearts of our young people, the hearts of our children, we're lifting up their hearts before you. And we're asking for their hearts. We're asking for their spirits, Lord. We're asking for them. We're asking for every one of them because it's your will that all people be saved and that all people come to the knowledge of the truth. So, yes. Father, we're praying for oh, them. Oh, for the light, the light, the That's light, the right. light, light, that light, that they would come into the light, that they would come into the light, increase the light. Oh, Father, we're re reaching, reaching, rescue, 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 rescue. Rescuing, rescuing. So many out tonight of that are on the edge, light. they're on the verge out of, of slipping over and into, into eternity without oh, knowing you. We're asking for them. We're asking yes. for them. We're you, reaching yes. for them. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Father, Thank rescue, you, Lord. rescue, yes. rescue, rescue, rescue. We call a on you, the one who is powerful to save and to deliver. And so nemeke, so mbromoko, so help. Help, 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 help. You are a very present help. You're a very present help. On time. Oh, we thank you, Lord. You're present. You're present in us. You're present through us. You're present in this nation. You're a very present help. Yes, yes. And so thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your presence. We're speaking peace. Yes. Peace to this nation. Yes, in Jesus Peace name. in the name of in Jesus. Jesus. And Amoko Sombro, you said pray so for all men, for kings, for all who are in authority, so that we can lead a quiet and peaceable life in yes. all godliness Thank and honesty, Jesus. for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, yes. who wills Thank all you, men to be saved mm. and all men to come to the knowledge of the truth. So, Lord, we're praying for them. We're praying for oh, our second. leaders, That's all of right. our leaders, all of, them. All of our all leaders. Of leaders. Father, Father, those that aren't Agata born again, da, 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 they need you. We're, we're you, asking Lord, for yes. their salvation. You, Lord, you love them. Leaders you sent Jesus to die for to them. And the Lord, they, they need Agata an encounter with you. We're asking for yeah, encounters. encounters. Oh, yes. we're asking for yes. encounters yes. with you. Thank you oh, Lord. we're asking you to show up your presence to show up. We're asking for laborers to be sent to them, Father. We're asking for them yes, to, uh, yes. on the internet and on the TV and on the radio and wherever they might be. Yes. Oh, the gospel oh, breaking through That's to them. Right. Oh, Thank in the you, name Lord. of Jesus, light, your, word, light, your word, your word, your word. We send oh, your word to light. them in the salvation name of Jesus. Light. Your word breaking through, breaking yes. on the scene. Yes. Light your there. word with light, light. and your word light. comes with light. Oh, the entrance da, 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 of da, your da, da, word da, da, brings da, da, da. light. Yes. And so we thank you, light, da, light, da, 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 light, da, 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 light, da, da, light, da, da, light to those leaders who don't know you. Oh, yes. light, light, oh, light, the light, light. They need you. They need Jesus. Oh, light, 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 light. We speak uh, da, 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 light ba, to yes, them. Light, we speak light, life light. over them. Yes. Oh, in the name oh, da, 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 of Jesus, da, 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 that you will come to know da, 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 your da, 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 creator yeah. and discover yeah. your God-given yes. purpose the in real, the name the of real, Jesus. The, real, the, real. the reality uh, of God. Da, da, ba, the love of God. Oh, Father, that they would know your love. It would overwhelm them. It would overtake them. It would overcome them in a way that's undeniable. Yes. Oh, like only you can do. Like a flood. Like a flood. Like a flood. Yes. Oh, a flooding. And Lord, those of our leaders that are born again, Father, they 
We lift them up now. We're praying for a strengthening. We're praying for strengthening. Come on, let's lift them up. Oh, strong. We're praying because it's the strong spirit of a man that sustains him through bodily pain and trouble. And we know there's been lots of trouble coming at them. So we surround them right now with our faith and with our prayers. We apply the blood of Jesus over them. And we say, Satan, no. You desist in your maneuver and in your operations against our Christian leaders yes, in that's Jesus' right. name. That's right. No you more. stop no it more. No in the more. name of Jesus. No more. And no oh, more. we thank you, Lord, oh, for ba, your ba, ba, delivering so power. Shaga. You yeah, deliver these free. men and setting women free. from evil. Setting oh, free. you deliver yeah, them. Pots. You preserve their lives free. in the name free. of Jesus. Uh, da, da, we ba, declare so, every oh, yeah. assassination yeah. plot yes. is stopped in Jesus' name. Name. No, in no, Jesus no. That's we right. say no That's to right. you no. in the name no. of Jesus. In Jesus oh, name. we call oh, angels. You, yeah. We send oh, forth Baba the soul. angels of God yes. round about yes. them. Yes. Oh, to on minister assignment. to them. On strength, assignment. strength, on strength, assignment. strength, uh, strength, uh, strength, uh, protection, uh, deliverance. Uh, oh, Father, bring them deeper. Bring them deeper, deeper, oh, deeper da, 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 with you. Da, 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 oh, my da, God, da, we yeah, lift them up yeah, that they yeah, would come into the knowledge awareness, of their awareness. redemption, that they to would come to know you, to know, you, to know your them. glory, oh, to know da, what you have done for them through Christ, who they are in Christ, what they can do through Christ. Father, their authority, their dominion, how to be led by the Spirit of God, the authority of your word how to stand on your word what faith is how to walk by faith and not by sight how to live by faith for the just are to live by faith. Father, fill them with wisdom and knowledge and understanding of your word and grant unto them that they they would have wisdom and make wise choices. Oh, not out of pressure. That's right. Not out of fear, not out of public opinion, not out of voices that come and say, you know, what you got to do is you got to do this because you know what they're going to say, that the pressure that would come. No, no, no. Led by your spirit. Led by your spirit. Oh, Father, we lift them up. We lift them up. Learning to be led. Learning to be led. And it is so brebe. Kishkidi i brogodo. Oroba godoro. Ba kishkidi i galabra. Kishkidi i brasibidi i kiteme. Emenendi undo. Emenendi ambondo menekinando. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Father, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways and pray, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive. I will heal their land. And so, Father, turn, turn, turning, turning. Oh, it's a time of turning, 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 turning. Emadeba unde debe ke shabando ude bash kiti di inda ambro poko. Oh, emadi imbo. It's more about the church than you know. It's more about the church than you realize. If my people. If my people, and so we turn to you, so we turn to you, we turn our hearts to you, we set our love on you, we set our love on you, we set our love on you, for there is no one else like you, we set our love on you. All of my affection, all of my love, all of my love on you.
breath we take, every breath we take, every move we make, we need you, we need your wisdom, we need your guidance, we need your hand, oh, we need you, we need you, Lord. your understanding. We need you, Lord. Your light, your light, your life, your truth, your joy, your strength. Let's just lift our hands to him tonight. Lord, we just tell you we love you tonight. And thank you that you chose us. Just tell him, thank you that you chose me. Thank you that you chose me. Thank you, Lord, for the price you paid for me and we just say with our mouths tonight we love you and we choose to serve you with our whole being we choose to serve you with everything we are we thank you Lord use us use us and no longer will we discredit ourselves 
because we're made in your image and your likeness and you chose us to be set here in this time in the earth to manifest you. So we thank you, Lord. We'll, we'll be bold. We'll think the thoughts that you think about us. We'll say the things that you say about us that we're called, that we're chosen, that we have a supply, that we are useful, that we are making a difference. No longer do we give a ear or voice to those lies of the enemy, but we combat them with the truth of what your word says. I am enough. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am bold. I can speak. I can lay hands on the sick and see him recover. I can do it. No longer are we defeated, but we can do it. We can do it. It's not too hard. We can do it. No longer do we say we don't know. We do know. Because the Holy Spirit is in us and with us. So we do know. We do know your voice. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the work that you're doing in us. And we choose to continue to yield to that work that you're doing and to be sensitive to what you're saying. Sensitive. Thank you, Lord. Just We have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Just say that tonight. I have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Let's say it again. I have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Thank you, Lord. We do. We do know your voice. And as strangers, we don't follow. <laughs> we don't go that way because we know the way. We know your voice. And we trust that voice. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Called and chosen, each one of you, called and chosen. Aren't you thankful? So if you've been thinking you're not called and chosen, that's a lie. Because he's called and chosen you. Amen? So keep being that voice for him. Keep using your voice and your words to just love and build up, speak what he's saying, declare what he's saying, worship and praise, all that. Amen. Thank you guys for joining us. Don't forget to get your children, give our children's workers and our youth workers a high five and hey, thank you. How many of you know it's so awesome that we have people who love our kids, love our students, and don't just treat it as a mm, babysitting. But man, they're imparting the word just like you're getting in here. It's awesome. So just take a moment to thank them for what they do. And we will see you on Sunday. Love y'all.